Oh my god, and it was technical. It was I cannot describe the feeling that I feel right now. I'm literally just sleeping on a towel on the sand. Alright, there's a group of about 10 about to catch me. I think that was probably... I'm going to say it was the worst night of sleep I've ever had. Last week, I decided to fly to Morocco in northern Africa to take part in the Skoda Titan Desert Race, a 600 kilometer mountain bike race across the Sahara Desert. How hard can it be? Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the African Desert. It's gonna be six stages in total. This race is 600 kilometers long. We arrived here yesterday after taking two flights. I'll tell you more about the race as it goes on. Today we've got a 90 kilometer route with 2000 meters of elevation, three checkpoints we have to pass in order to qualify and, and to finish with, with a position. Highs of around 35 degrees today, so it's gonna be absolutely roasting. Hence why I've got this camel back on. I've got a couple of bottles as well. All right, so update time. We are 45 kilometers in to the first stage, 45 to go. We're bang on halfway. We've been riding for just over two hours. And finally, finally, we've got a bit of a road. Today's been brutal so far. I'm actually finding it quite hard to breathe. I think the combination of the altitude and the amount of dust that you're just ingesting, it all adds to the challenge. But I found myself in this little group of five now. We're not at the front, but we're not a million miles away, I don't think. 45 kilometers into stage one, it already became apparent that this wasn't just any old mountain bike race. We had to cross this fast flowing river, holding onto nothing but a little bit of metal rope. Thank you. Oh. Our brand new shoes. <laughs> well, I've just walked through a river, so there's that. All right, we're sat right now at over 40k an hour. We've got a tailwind on a dirt on a tarmac road, and we are flying along. Bonjour. We're just approaching the town. We're probably going to be pulling off this road very soon, just as I'm starting to enjoy it. About a minute after I stopped filming that last shot from the river, we were riding through a deeper part of the river and there was a boulder invisible from, from, you know, from the surface, from my point of view. Inevitably, I hit it, went over the handlebars. Didn't hurt myself or do any damage other than my ego and my pride. But yeah, first fall of the, of the, of the race, first fall of the week. But we're back on the bike, we're heading to the finish. We've got about 32, 33 kilometers to go. It's probably gonna be about an hour and a half of riding. The last hour, I've not really filmed too much just because like this, so it's got hard. Basically, it's got hard. The sun's at its highest point. Hey! We just had the crest, a two kilometer climb, which averaged about 10%, which at the end of the day, I, let me tell you, that hurts. That hurts a lot. <laughs> Stage one completed. I can't believe we've done it on a gravel bike, that is crazy. I know. It was freaking crazy. It was a really bad idea, I have to say. Like, Are your arms sore? Honestly, I think I need a treatment from a physio. <laughs> like, the legs are fine, but like in the end, I had to slow down because I had so much pain here. Oh. oh my god, and it was technical. It was I mean, there were some sections, so yeah. If you ever think about doing the Titan we Desert on a gravel, Done. You better write your bag really well. <laughs> so each night we sleep in these things called Hamas, which essentially in layman's terms is a tent. And this is like a rolling village that moves with the race. So that is day one done. I've got tomorrow's route profile here. It's a slightly longer day, but with less elevation. So I'm going to head to bed, get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> So I spent a lot of yesterday trying to move up the bunch after starting at the back but I think today stay tuned because I finished around 30th yesterday we get gridded and I can start at the front so I'm not gonna have to fight my way through the pack but yeah let's see what we can do. In here? Aki? Aki? Go this. Alright here we go stage number two. The first five kilometers is gonna be neutralized today but the first 30 apparently is on the tarmac road so be a nice start. I'm not sure where I got that information from and whoever it was from is a categorical liar. We had maybe three kilometers tops on the asphalt then we were back into the rough stuff.
People were crashing all over the show. I managed to avoid the crashes. And I'm in the front split right now of about 20 guys, I think, to give you a bit of an idea as to how hard and how fast the first hour was. We averaged over 33 kilometers per hour on a full suspension mountain bike. That's fast. I'm disappointed because I've not seen any camels yet. That's the only reason I came to Africa. There's the front group. I've just been dropped on the first climb. <laughs> oh mate, this is brutal. I'm in no man's line right now. I don't know where the second group is. Hopefully not too far behind and they can sweep me up. Yeah, I'm just trying to measure my effort. Still got like 90k to go today. Each day there's three checkpoints that you have to pass through and this is number two. So we've just started what is the final main climb of the day. As you can see here, it takes us over this mountain pass and it's basically our exit point of the Atlas Mountains. We climb up to about 2000 meters again, but then from the top of there, it's a 30 kilometer, mostly downhill to the finish and to the next camp tonight. Thankfully, this is gonna be the last of the high elevation riding because I am battered. That right there was the Skoda challenge, the time segment on the final climb of the day. Needless to say, I won't be contesting the win on that one. But now we're going down. Woo! After the brutal last four kilometer climb, we had a long sweeping descent that lasted for about 15 kilometers, meandering down the Atlas Mountains towards the Sahara Desert. So just crossed the line about 10 minutes ago, made it to my Hema, the tent for tonight. Today was a hard day. I actually thought it would be easier today than it was yesterday, but I think the combination of the fatigue from yesterday plus the, the sunlight from eight o'clock this morning made that, yeah, today was <laughs> catastrophically more intense than yesterday. The headwind coming in for the last 20K was absolutely brutal. It was a block headwind, but that's another day down, stage two, done and dusted. Now we need a shower, some food, and a lot of water. Oh, man. I can't remember what I was thinking here. Probably something along the lines of, what have I got myself into? So behind me, this is the camp for tonight. This is where we're staying. And there in the distance is the town of Nob. I'm not even joking, it's actually, it's, it's called Nob. But we're at about 1200 meters of elevation here. And the race only goes lower and lower down to, yeah, the desert at, at, at slightly above sea level. So I think we're in for a fun few days. So that is another day done. In bed again before 10 o'clock, which for me, that's early. So tomorrow is a marathon stage. I'll explain more in the morning. Welcome to stage three. Today is a marathon stage. So one of the more, I guess, unique aspects of this race was the marathon stages. There was two marathon stages in total and these were essentially the long distance stages. So they were 130 kilometers, but rather than getting to our destination and having uh, our tent with a, a bed and electricity, instead we had very few resources and it was down to the individual's choice as to what essentials they wanted to take with them. Upon arrival to the camp, we were provided a meal, a shower, a towel, and that was it. I think this was the first point in the race where I felt very much underprepared due to my lack of sleep and equipment. So I packed what few supplies I had on me into my camelback, ready for my night's sleeping rough. And I loaded my suitcase onto the truck where it's gonna be kept for the next two days. It's going on the truck. So we're at the start line here. Looking around, most people have brought a sleeping bag or uh, some sort of blow up mattress with them, which, yeah, I didn't think many people would be, but it turns out most of the, the field has got some sort of mattress or sleeping bag. Me, I've got a pair of shorts, my toothbrush, a t-shirt, and a small puffer jacket. Yeah, starting to regret that a little bit, but hey yo, we're here now, nothing we can do. The start yesterday was absolutely bonkers. We averaged over 33k an hour. So hopefully today is a little bit more tranquilo, eh? All right, we're on the first climb. We're in the front group. So the start seems a little bit more chill today, for sure. I think it's because the first climb comes quite soon after the start. So, you know, maybe people sort of conserve themselves a little bit for that. And now we've been dropped from the front group. Should try and ride my own tempo find a group over the top. We got a nice long descent after this climb. 
About 10 kilometers of dragging my sorry ass across the desert later, a large group with about 20 guys caught me, being spearheaded by none other than five-time Tour de France champion Miguel Indurain. I knew if I could hang with these lot, I'd be all right. I am cramping in places I did not know I could cramp. I'm out of water, but I can see the feeds, the final feed station in front of me, about 500 meters away. Oh mate, this is brutal. Suddenly, all urgency of wanting to stay with that group disappeared. When we arrived at the final water stop, half the group decided to skip it and just press on. I happily waved them goodbye. As I was desperate for some water, my mouth was drier than the Sahara Desert at this point. And things were only going to get worse. So I'm only about 7k. 7k away from the, uh, from the camp but I've just had to stop under this tree. Now this is probably a good time to bring something to your attention. You might notice that little box on my shoulder, that is a GPS tracking device, so the organization can see where we are at any given time. It also has a button which allows you to call for medical assistance should you need it. Spoiler alert, I ended up pressing this button. This is without a doubt the hardest thing I think I've ever done on a bike, off the bike. It's just brutal. The, the temperature, the heat, back to back five, plus our days in the desert, man. It's, it's brutal, it's absolutely brutal. I feel sick, I think I've got heat stroke. But like any good man, I mustered on, fueled by the motivation of seeing my first camel. Oh, we have made it, we made it. I don't know how, but we made it. So it's dark now, I know you can't see anything, but this is pretty much the camp set up tonight. It's not, there's not a lot to it. It's a very basic camp, it's a very small camp. There was a restaurant where we had some food earlier. There's like a shower area down there where you can have a wash and clean your teeth. Uh, and yeah, that's lich, that's about it. So this is the sleeping situation tonight. Got myself a puffer jacket for when it gets a bit colder later in the night, because it does get cold in the desert. And we're literally just sleeping on a towel on the sand. Don't think I'm gonna to get too many hours of sleep tonight, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. Good morning, it is just gone 6 a.m. It's time to get up. I think that was probably, I'm gonna say it was the worst night of sleep I've ever had. Um, yeah, I reckon I got an hour. Oh, today's gonna be hard. Today's gonna be really hard. How was it? I don't know, because I didn't sleep. Well, I mean, like three hours in total. In, uh, I couldn't fall asleep because it was too hot and then I woke up because it was cold yeah. from my two hour nap or whatever it was. And you? About the same, yeah. But hey, back to back, 130 kilometer days with two hours sleep. Be easy, right? Easy, easy, especially as a fourth day. Yeah. Stage four and the final marathon stage. Now what makes today's stage so unique is the fact that we only have the first 15 kilometers of the route profile and the final 80 kilometers. There was around 40 kilometers in the middle of self-navigation where we just had a GPS coordinate that we had to head for. Sounds simple, right? I found myself, I think in a third group now. I decided to take the start a little bit easier today rather than just put myself in a box. I just haven't got the legs or the mentality to be in the front today. And now we've dropped down the elevation, we're onto the like proper sandy desert, which is surprisingly difficult to ride through. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to tap it out in this group. We've got about 30 guys, so on a day like today, I think it's important to, to be with a decent group. A long day in the saddle, a hot day. First climb of the day, was riding up the side of a sand dune. Wow. What goes up must come down. However, what we were presented with was this real deep, soft sand. Someone gave me a bit of useful advice to not follow the other tracks and to find new, untouched sand, as this was easier to ride on. But eventually, and inevitably, I came to a stop. I didn't rush back onto my bike here. This was one of those pivotal points of the race, where my mentality went from, okay, let's race this thing, to 
survival. We still have well over four hours of riding today, much of it in the desert, where it's going to reach 44 degrees. So actually the navigation point turned out to be a little bit easier than I thought it was gonna be. First, I'm in a big group that know where they're going, but secondly, I just loaded the second route onto my Wahoo, zoomed out, and I'm just essentially following the following no man's land until we reach the start of the second, well, the start of the second GPS point. Again, I'm very thankful I'm in a big group because I would not like to be here on my own. We are going through some sick, thick sand right now. We cannot ride through it, so I'm having to walk. We've just basically hiked up this whole hill and we're still going. So there's something like 60k to go and I've found myself in the one place I didn't want to find myself on my own in the middle of nowhere. It's a little bit daunting, but I just got to remember that I've got the GPX and you know, there's plenty of people behind me. Just got to keep pedaling. Okay, it's 10 kilometers, just, just over 10 kilometers to go. I've had to take shelter under this tree. Oh, I just feel dizzy, man. I feel dizzy and I feel sick. I think. I think I have heat stroke. I've drank seven liters of water today so far. Wait, no more. 7.5 liters of water. I don't feel good at all. It's 40 degrees in the desert today. So I'm just gonna try and cool myself down a little bit in, in the shade. Got a bit of a breeze as well. And then uh, crack on and get the last 10K done. Yeah, the desert is no joke. However, after having two long days on the bike and no bed last night, we've been rewarded in camp tonight. We've got our beds back in the, in the tents, but we've also got one of these. It's now 6.30, it's been about four hours since we arrived at the hotel. People are still arriving. It's been a long day for them, but I feel like I'm finally in a position where I can speak to the camera again and we can summarize a little bit on today. And I'm pretty set, I'm pretty sure that today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this outright on camera, I think today was the single hardest day I've ever had on the bike. The combination of no sleep last night, the temperature today, walking a mountain bike through sand dunes whilst riding 130 kilometers on a mountain bike. I have no tears left because I cried for three hours. I was even screaming, I've never heard anything this hot in my life. Yeah. Do it on a gravel bike. <laughs> I mean, fair play to you though. Put it there, you've done four stages. Thank you. We're, we're over halfway now. Yeah, we are. Thank God. I wonder if anyone's ever done it on a gravel bike before. Maybe I'm you're the first sure one. I'm not sure if there's anyone who's done it on a gravel bike. Like, there, there surely is a reason for nobody doing that on a gravel bike apart from me. <laughs> yeah. So that is another day done. I'm back in some sort of bed tonight. At least I've got a mattress. So I'm going to try and make the most of that and get an early night's sleep to catch up for last night. Things are starting to get pretty tough now, but we are four stages down. Two more to go. The end is in sight. Hasta mañana. Tens. Here we are. Ready for uh, probably one of the most beautiful stage you can uh, dream of. Since since you've been uh, thinking morning, about uh, coming to Morocco, you've been thinking about the dunes. I don't want to hear this song this, ever again. Uh, landscape After this week. Of desert. Okay, welcome to stage five. Today is the uh, June day, which I can only assume involved cycling up lots of sand dunes. I was walking to the start from the Hema this morning. The okay, mood in okay. camp has definitely, minute, definitely dropped. Um, everything, everyone's feeling a little bit tired. I woke up in the night and I was sick. And this morning I have a banging headache. So I think I maybe took sunstroke yesterday. But yeah, I've been smashing the water. Hopefully it can pass and I can feel all right today. Officially moving, 100 kilometers coming up, many of which on the sand dunes. Let's see how it goes. How are your legs, Miguel? Good. You're good? <laughs> Mine aren't. <laughs> All right, one little piece of advice, if anyone wants to do a, mount a mountain bike race, especially a marathon mountain bike race, bring some gloves. That's one big mistake I've made. My hands 
Amongst other things, I'm pretty sore today. The dune stage lived up to its name and it didn't take long before I was hauling my bike up the side of what felt like a sandy mountain. I thought in order to give myself the best chance possible of being able to ride through this sand would be to drop the pressure in my tires and try and create more traction. No bike should be here. This is not. Ale, vamos. Ale, Johan. Push, push. That's Johan, my Spanish friend. Feed station number two, we're about 50 kilometers in, halfway through today's stage. The urgency has certainly left me in trying to get water as quick as I possibly can. We're just in survival mode now. I, I honestly don't think I've ever felt this sick. I can only assume it's from the heat and the humidity and yeah, just being in Morocco. So I feel like this was the start of the end for me. It seemed like no amount of water I could consume was able to rehydrate me at this stage. I was too far gone. Today was another navigation stage where we didn't have 30 kilometers of the route. I was on my own. All I could see was the track in front of me and a couple of guys down the road. I was trying not to let them get too far away so I had some sort of guidance as to where I could go, but things were not looking good. We are well and truly riding down Struggle Street right now. Um, yeah, it's 39 degrees. I feel like shit. We're about six kilometers over halfway. So I'm just trying to keep that mentality in my head that, you know, we've done, we've done the, the fair share of it. And this is, uh, I guess the home stretch. Final feed zone, 20K to go. And I found a chair. 10K to go. I've just stopped at this hut for a little bit of shelter from the wind and the sun. So I've just thrown up again. I'm trying not to be over dramatic, but I do not feel well. So update, I've um, I did another kilometer. I'm about 8.5 from home, uh, and about 20 minutes ago, I pressed I pressed the medical assistance button, which is like the pickup service, I guess. I just cannot ride the last 8k. I cannot describe the feeling that I feel right now. I feel sick. I'm dizzy and I just feel like absolute <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. I'm pretty sure this is heat stroke. If you're gonna come and do this challenge then make sure you acclimatize and do some heat adaptive training beforehand, especially if you're coming from England where it's so far away from the temperature that we're currently working with here. Good morning, welcome to stage six, uh, the final stage of this year's Skoda Titan Desert Race. It's a 71k stage today to the finish um, and I am not taking part. Yeah, ever since I took ill yesterday, 8k to go, I've just been, um, yeah, I do not feel good at all. And I've, I've been racing competitively long enough to know that. You know, I know when to listen to my body and I know when to put my health first. And in this situation, it would just not be wise to race another 70k in the desert in 40 degree heat so yeah that's uh, that's where we're at i obviously feel pretty crappy that you know i've come all the way to morocco and i've had to quit the race on the last stage but yeah i, don't, I really don't think there's anything else that i could do in the situation it was a bittersweet end to my time racing the skoda titan desert race was i unprepared yes did i underestimate it i just feel like absolute Yes, I've got unfinished business with this race, so who knows, maybe I'll be back with thinner blood and a sleeping bag next year. See you next time.